The Gage Live at the NFR is brought to you by Cavenders and Bill Fick Ford. We cannot forget about Rule Cloth, the Royal Crown Fraternity, and Bailey's House of Guns. This is The Gage with host Chance Conradu. Are you freaking serious? It's Conrado. This is The Gage, and I am Chance Conrado. We are live still in Arlington, Globe Life Field, round eight of the National Finals Rodeo. We're doing our thing. We're almost done. Thank God my whittle soul is about to burst. Um, we started the night with Ryan Jarrett, who had that sick hula hand. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen that on TV before, but he hula hand his calf, which is throwing the rope backwards. Uh, he also ties from the belt. He's just a cool some buck. But uh, he stopped by, gave us some of his time. Right after that, we had Blake Knowles, who threw down uh, a round winner in the steer wrestling. And then we got Colby Lovell and Paul Eves, who took it in the team roping. Got to talk about Paul's sweet-ass beard. I'm jealous that he could grow something like that. Uh, best beard in the game, I will tell you. He should grow that out and be a young Santa Claus. Um then we took a little break. We didn't do tie down tonight because we did have Ryan Jarrett stop by and he got third in the round, by the way. So, so he had a nice little chunk of change. Haley Kinzel beat a record from Dodge city fastest time ever on a standard pattern on her cyborg course. You guys know the name. I don't have to tell you. Well, what was equally impressive was Emily coming in there and running a, uh, a 1675. Not too long after that guys, she picked up a barrel, did a leg lift, did the whole thing. These two horses are performing on another level. It's unbelievable. Here's the thing. We had a lot of fun. We always do. Uh, you know how it is when they come on the show. Young Ty had a great idea. Make that a second episode, so go check that one out. Thank you to our partners over at Cavenders. Cavenders has been a trusted cowboy boot and western wear outfitter for over 50 years. Discover why their loyal customers love their collections of western wear. Check them out at cavenders.com for the latest styles. All right, guys, we are starting the day out with uh, Ryan Jarrett, who had some pretty fancy roping last night. Uh, the only time I can think of I've pulled that off is playing a game of horse. How the heck did you? I mean, we saw you over under your horse. Obviously, he did, you were you were late. Were yep. you just like, I'm late. I'm halfway down the pen, so I'm going to make it fun for the fans? I mean, wh where was the the thought there? Uh, no, not not really thinking of the fans. Yeah. That's... <laughs> That's just if if I go to whip a horse, uh, it just feels more natural for me to uh, when I pick my rope back up. It has momentum behind it. Just yeah. To to hooli hand it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You just you don't see a lot of people with the stones to try to do that at the national finals. I bet no one's done that at the NFR before. Uh, probably not. Yeah. I, I, like, I'm not a trendsetter enough. I'm one of two guys to tie from the belt, and then I'm going to hula hand my calf tonight. <laughs> like, why not go for that? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, it's not the first time I've ever done it at a pro yeah. rodeo. Really? No, no. Um, I, as a matter of fact, there's a film from second round at Ellensburg of me. I broke the barrier on one, and calf went hard right, and I went over and under my horse and just got him in there behind it and just swing it backwards and <laughs> stick it on him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's that's the trick you always play if you're trying to win a game of a game of horse. <laughs> yeah, it's hard yeah. enough on the on the ground on your feet. You got to <laughs> practice that and practice that. But yeah. to pull it off, you know, on a pin of calves like that, and at, at the national finals rodeo, I mean, people are never going to stop talking about it. So probably not. If you wanted not. to get famous, <laughs> that's not really like win a what gold I was, buckle. That's not really or what will hand your calf. <laughs> you decided to go that way. Yeah, yeah, that's not really what I was after by no yeah. means. I, I just I was late and. Didn't really feel like my horse was top speed, and, and that's just kind of my go-to. When I go to over and under one, I just hit on the left tip and come back up and yeah. and swing it backwards. And, and uh, that's one the kid that owns the horse that Shane Hanchy's riding, he yeah. was just a while ago, he's like, you had lots of confidence in doing that. Yeah. I'm like, it, it's – it goes around their neck, same as swing, yeah. <laughs> swinging it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, when you throw it like that, it doesn't look like there's any chance of that closed loop getting around them. But I mean, it, it was yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. we were all pretty pretty happy to watch it. People are talking about it all day. Oh yeah, it's kind of like you're right up there with Emily with putting the rubber bands on her arms. So I mean, That's, two yeah. fun things from from the NFR. If nothing else, we got a barrel racer <laughs> with rubber bands and a guy who ties from the belt and who lands his cast. Yep. Well, for sure. What the? I'm I'm sure you've told plenty of people this, but I mean, why did you start tying from the belt? I mean, Man, definitely I, a disadvantage. Uh, just when I was a kid, I was real, real small and 
had trouble flanking anyways, and it, it I mean, I'd be down there tussling with them for a while, and and I used to would string a calf, and I would step in between their legs with I, – I wouldn't really actually sit on their side. I would uh, step in between their legs with my left foot and then cross the calves, and uh, just – I always put in my belt practicing and for you and and uh Pendleton Oregon is I I had a little horse that was really good on the grass but he was a fruit loop in the box. <laughs> but if you put your string in your belt, he would be a little more relaxed. You could kind of bluff him a little bit. So he was whipped at some point in his life and was worried about it. Yeah. yeah. He, he he could feel you tense up, bear down on your string and bite down on it so to say and and uh I just I put it in my belt right there at Pendleton that year and been rolling with it since. Yeah, I mean it works for you. I mean, I, the first time I ever saw you at the finals, I saw that and uh, I was like, let, let me try that. You know, just try it on a on a calf from the post, and yeah, it, it yeah. was a mess. I was like, never again. <laughs> no wonder nobody does this crap. Yeah, yeah, it it, it, it it's the way I grew up doing it, so it, it's I'm comfortable. So yeah, it, it's good. That's no, cool. absolutely. So setting all the uh, the trickery and fun stuff that you do aside, <laughs> I mean, what has been kind of your opinion? We're we're uh, kind of winding down to the end here. I mean, what's been your opinion of Arlington so far? I mean, you were late last night, but, I mean, you're no stranger to three under on the barrier. I mean, it's a normal thing. So It is. It is. I haven't gotten the groove. Uh, none. I've placed twice, and it, none of it's felt real good. Uh, actually went home and roped a little bit, run a few today, and – we shall see tonight. I, yeah. I don't know. I just hadn't felt kind of in between swings and and not uh, not in my comfort zone really, so to yeah. say. Just wanting to go another one, but oh man, he's right there. And then I, I the one calf that I had the two loop. I, I mean that's that's money calf all day. Yeah. And, and there I am down there, eleven seconds, two looping the son of a gun. But here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a chance <laughs> to look at your calf for tonight? Uh yeah, I gonna go left uh, a little off the pace. I don't know if he's. I, I'm sure maybe top six kind of calf maybe. Sure. Hopefully slide in there, but I, I I don't really feel like he's first place. But sure, we, we shall see. Yeah, I, it's been. I mean, outside of Shad and all the money he's won, he's had hell. But uh, mm -hmm. a lot of guys that that you maybe thought would come in here and, and light it up haven't, and then some guys that I mean. I don't think I would have picked Hunter Herring to win two rounds in a row, right, just based right. on kind of the last few years of his I career. But yep, yep. It's been fun to watch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some excitement for sure. Um, glad to be in here in Arlington for sure. Um, uh, it's it's a di different atmosphere than Thomas and Mac. I mean, it's pretty cool to be, be able to stay down there and warm up and be in the building the whole time. Uh, Vegas, you're over there in the moat out in the weather, cold, trying to warm up. It's not great, but it's a little different vibe when you when you ride in Thomas and Mike versus here. Um but I, I I'm glad we're here. Yeah. I mean just to be having it. I mm -hmm. mean that's been the topic the whole time is everybody's just like, thank goodness we've got it. The right. fans came through, bought up all the tickets. Now everybody yeah. gets full full round money. Yep. It's yeah, I mean it's been great a great eight eight days to watch and I'm sure it's yep. been a great eight days to just you know, be included in the top 15 and what have you. But, I mean, you prefer Thomas and Mac. You'd never want to see it leave there probably like like me, right? I, I it Thomas and Mac, pretty good vibe for – It's, <sighs> it's lo vibe, lots yeah. of Lots of energy in that arena. Right. I mean, there he is. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 if they have it and uh, here next year, and ho I hope I'm here. It, it don't matter where it's at. You just hope you make it. You just want to be here, yeah. want to be here and, and uh, get some of their prize money. Absolutely. I mean, you had a pretty good regular season. You were right, right up in there, and uh, mm -hmm. done some fun stuff. And hey, maybe tonight's your night. We shall see. I wonder how ballsy you are. We just come straight out and hula hand tonight. <laughs> I got to get a whip in to make for, 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 for it to work. <laughs> yep. Well, guys, Ryan Jarrett was kind enough to stop by. We're going to let him go uh, go get ready for the rodeo. As everybody knows who's watching it, it moves really quick. We'll be at the tie down in no time. So uh, thanks for taking the time to come in, and uh, thanks for all the entertainment. And I can't wait to see all the memes. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Thank you, guys. Oh, you bet. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Guys, Bill Fick Ford is the number one Super Duty in the entire country. Number one. They are a family-owned and operated dealership with no bull discounts, no bull interest rates. These are some of the best rates you can get on a new Super Duty, guys. They also offer nationwide shipping, so you're not limited to that Ford dealer you might not like in your backyard. Go to BillFickFordHuntsville.com for the best deals on a new Super Duty. Go look in the contestant parking if you're here at Globe Life. You'll see more Bill Fick Fords 
than any other brand. Big shout out to Rural Cloth. If you like hunting, fishing, back roads, family farms, ice cold beer, bonfire nights, old pickup trucks, dogs, never cats, and mud on your boots, it's because you are cut from Rural Cloth. Rural Cloth is the brand for you. This brand sets out to create quality apparel for the rural American. We even did a podcast with Mr. Brandon Bates, who is their founder. He is also a longtime PBR announcer. They set up a coupon code for you guys to use over at RuleCloth.com. Use the coupon code GAGE right now for 20% off during the entire NFR and 10% off after the NFR ends. That promo code is GAGE at checkout. Go do some Christmas shopping. Support small business. How important is that right now? Go support Rule Cloth right now. All right, guys, we are back. Sorry for the big delay there, but uh, Blake Knowles gets it done in round eight, three six on the clock. It was a uh, it was a pretty squirrely night in the Bulldog end. Yeah, there was a there was some you know this pin of cattle tonight. It, it does present some challenges. Um, you know, there's probably three or four steers that um, they've just been tough uh, all week. You yeah, know? and tonight again we saw it, and uh, you know. I guess that creates opportunities, right? So luckily I was, I didn't have some of those steers. I had kind of the better end of them and was able to take advantage of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's kind of been a roller coaster the entire rodeo. We've seen some lightning fast times and we saw a three, three, which I mean, for this pin and the way it's set up, I mean, I don't know how it could get faster than that, but uh, you know, the difference between a three, three and a three, six isn't all that much, but a little bit on the start, what, what has been your opinion so far of, uh, you know, of the start? And obviously it's a lot different than say Thomas and Mac, but it is pretty consistent with most rodeos really. Yeah, it is. And it's, I mean, I think it's awesome. Um, I love the Thomas and Mac. That's great. But I mean, if we're somewhere else and and I I couldn't ask for it to be better, like I think the start is still, um, it's pretty dang fast. Um, We've tried to pick cattle that are conducive for fast starts. So they they try and they run. And I think that throughout this week, um, man, I've been in awe what these guys are doing. It's been as a competitor, it's awesome to be a part of. Um, but as a steer wrestler, it's been fun to watch too. Guys are sticking it on them. It's been as tough rounds as I've ever been a part of or ever seen. It has. And I mean, <clears throat> the plot just keeps thickening. It's, I mean, it, Matt Reeves came in with a pretty decent lead there, but he has absolutely had hell. He did get that yeah. one round win, but. Uh, yeah, you know, rodeo is a sport. And and as we see in all sports, uh, momentum is huge, right? So Matt came in. He, he kind of had some heck right off the bat, unfortunately. Did a horse change, tried to regroup, kind of kind of saw things were kinda not going the perfect direction, tried to fix it, got on Tyson, who has just been awesome all week as that great horse of Curtis Cassidy's. Yeah, absolutely. And, and unfortunately, though, tonight goes out with a no time. And, uh, and you know, now I, I don't know how it's all going to play out. Um, we're all just going to try to win as much as we can, but I think it's going to be an uphill battle for him. Yeah, yeah, certainly is, and, and you've got guys coming in that's their first NFR that are really shaking things up, and uh, yeah, I mean, Jacob Edler's doing amazing, Stetson's doing amazing, you guys are all kind of having your moments to shine here, and it's it's just, I don't remember bulldogging being quite this interesting, personally, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge bulldogging guy, obviously, but uh, it, it, I think anybody who's watching right now has got to be a, a bulldogging fan, because it's just, it's just great rodeo. I hope so. I yeah. mean, it's easy for me to say that I am, right? right? Cause that's what I do. Your but, life work. but I think, <laughs> I th- and I think there's one kind of uh constant that, that you could point to, to that has helped create that, which is the horsepower this year. I, yeah. I just think the horses that are here this year and whether it's the different setup or the different venue, I don't know, but all I know is they all look awesome. I mean, really, I mean, um, it's a really strong group of horses and horsepower. And, you know, like I consider this event kind of like being a race car driver. Like if your car's not the fastest one, you're going to have a hard time winning. So, um, you know, I, it's been a fun, fun thing to be a part of. Yeah, no, certainly is. I mean, you had your night tonight, but yeah, kind of touching on what you said there, it, you know, well, unless, unless something happens with the steer out of, you know, once they're out of the chute, but you know, kind of how the, how the run's going to go based on people's start. I mean, that's been the one thing that's been really consistent in the bulldogging and actually all the timed events, every barrier event. If someone nails the start, there is a good probability that they're going to have the time they need at a minimum place. Yeah, well, you're talking about 15 guys that are the best at this event this year. Uh, they're all extremely capable and and uh, and and good competitors and can dang sure, uh, you know, do good at whatever event they're doing. So what, so how do you create that separation as a competitor? Right. Well, one aspect is the start. I mean, you know, uh, everybody can throw their steers down fast, but 
who can nail that start and get your feet on the ground faster. Um, that's a big part of what can, what can separate you each night, whether you win or, or don't. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. And it's played out exactly like you said. I mean, nobody knows better than you and, and the other 14 guys out there on how to set these runs up, but it, there's so many minuscule factors, I think, especially in what you guys do that play in. I mean, it, it may not look like it, but the amount of technique that you guys have to, you know, implement to make sure you don't hang a leg, for instance, is it's not easy. And kids who are watching, I mean, what's one of the things you would tell guys who are striving to, to get here, like say it's a Bridger Anderson's from three years ago, you know, that, that kid who thinks they want to be here, but uh, it's not quite sure how to do it, or they look at it and maybe they assume it's a little too easy. I mean, if you've tried to, to bulldog and you don't know what you're doing, it is literally impossible. You can get ran over. Well, I, I would say first off is don't try to do anything that you've been watching, right? Because not that it's not right. It's just that, you know, most of these guys have spent, you know, upwards of 10,000 hours trying to, trying to, uh, you know, perfect this trade. So you're not just going to do it the first day. So I would say first off is be ready to go to work. Uh, just like any other sport, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of work. And then, uh, and then secondly, I think, um, you know, go find a really good school, go find, go find somebody that's putting on, you know, and there, there's Luke Branquino, there's Tyler Pearson. There's a lot of guys out there that are regionally putting on these schools. And I think that's a great, that's a great avenue to go to try to really get the fundamentals down because um and then once you get those fundamentals figure out which one which one you think you kind of have the upper edge on right so whether it's brute strength and that you can really throw down strong steers then you know develop that and let that be kind of your niche to to separate yourself or if it's scoring or riding a horse maybe that's what it is but find that and then use that to your advantage yeah i mean that's that's truly great advice and it's interesting in the bulldog and you see a a lot of different guys. Obviously, you've got giants out there. You know, Jacob Elder comes to mind, some other people but uh, who are here this year. But uh, then you see smaller guys like Rowdy Parrott, who, I mean, he won a, a fast round at the American this last year. And mm -hmm. Rowdy's the same size as me, and it's all technique with a guy like that and speed. And you really do, if you are a student of the sport or you enjoy bulldogging, you, you get to see so much so many different guys do so many different things and there's probably a fit for just about anybody out there at this point. Yeah, find, find a guy that you think may – be of your body type or of, you know, you kind of could see yourself in that person. And then, you know, that, that's kind of who you probably need to go visit with and try to perfect and try to emulate. Um, you know, Tyler Wagenspach's not the biggest guy in the world, but fundamentally, and, and, and he has perfected his craft as good as I've ever seen it done as far as, I mean, he is just almost his, his perfection and repetition of doing the same thing over and over is awesome. And, uh, and so, yeah, find that guy that you think kind of fits you and then, you know, look him up. Everybody's on social media. See if he's putting on a school and try to emulate that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's more opportunity now to learn than there ever was before. I mean, even five, 10 years ago, there just, there wasn't the depth of, of people or like social media helps. You, you can almost reach anybody. And that's, what's great about rodeo is whether it's a guy in the Thomas and Mac or, or an old dog who was here 20 years ago, it's, it's a quick phone call and you can probably reach them and they'll help you. Yeah. There's more available. We're, we're all more available than probably ever before because of like social media and i know i can speak for the steer wrestlers everybody's happy to help you know if, if there's if we can help somebody get to the next level or or answer a question or, or look at a run or something man everybody usually has a couple seconds to, to do that so we're happy to help yeah absolutely and uh you know we'll wish you one final congratulations you got uh one of the last globe life buckles that'll be given so uh congratulations on that they're pretty sweet looking and Hopefully you have fun at your gold buckle ceremony and whatever you're going to do after. It's not like you can go party or anything. So. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Ah, you bet. Yeah, I appreciate it. Also, thank you to Royal Crown. Royal Crown is a fraternity and derby as well as an open barrel race with roping events included, offering some of the industry's biggest payouts for riders, stallion shareholders, and breeders. Couple that with no annual enrollments. Look for their events in 2021 where they will be in Bryan, Texas in February. There'll be 65000 added to that fraternity, guys, as well as their event in Rock Springs, Wyoming in August. Check out royalcrownrace.com. Again, that's royalcrownrace.com. Or find Royal Crown on Facebook for information on the stallion enrollment, entering their 2021 races, and a list of enrolled stallions. That's royalcrownrace.com. Bailey's House of Guns is a family-owned and operated business based out of Houston, Texas. These guys have supplied law enforcement throughout the state with guns and ammunition for years. They also provide great options for hunters. Benelli Shotguns, Weatherby, 
Christensen Arms, Smith & Weston, Loophole Scopes, Swarovski Optics, just to name a few. They've been in business since 1970, guys. They are also a well-known sponsor of Rodeo and Rodeo Athletes. Give them a call, 713-433-2475 for more details. Here's the great thing, guys. They can ship guns and ammo to local FFLs in your area if you are not in the Houston market. They've got lots of stock. Give Bailey's House of Guns a call today. All right, guys, we are back, and we have got the uh, round eight team roping winners, Paul Eves and Colby Lovell. You know, Paul, that beard is pretty freaking impressive. I will tell you that uh, Oren Larson's getting all that attention for his mustache, and then, of course, Tilden Hooper for the hair, but, I mean, not a single person has mentioned the beard. I'll never have a beard like that. <laughs> Ty will certainly never have a beard like that, but uh, that's probably more impressive than the win tonight, let's be real. Because <laughs> if you give up team roping, it's like it's – Two more inches, you're a lumberjack. You're good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it has been a tonight was a it was a different night in the team. It looked more like round one tonight. I mean, a lot of a lot of slipped legs, misses. I mean, it was a rough uh, a rough go around. But you guys were able to come in pretty solid with the four three and pull it off. I and mean, we've seen faster nights, but I mean, you guys have been pretty consistent. Uh, you did have that. That was a pretty controversial crossfire. But uh, I mean, so far, what has been your guys' opinion of the, of the you know event? Oh, it's been it's been great. Uh, we've had, like you said, a couple weird things happen, and uh, but I mean, it's been it's been good. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, what do you guys? Clearly, the start that you guys have had it, it's pretty standard in, in rodeo throughout the year. Totally different than Thomas and Mac. But uh, was there an adjustment period you guys had to make? And we got to watch you guys in practice a little bit when when you know you first got those steers here. But uh, what were you guys thinking going into it? Would kind of be the game plan to use this setup to your advantage i don't know just make get it if it all comes down to getting a good start if you get a good start right there at the barrier you know kind of doesn't matter what you have if you miss the start steer runs and you're gonna have to hustle for a shot you know and steer can kind of be running loose wherever he goes you know uh so it, it comes down to that start getting a good start and putting things together yeah yeah i mean and we've seen guys do it we saw we saw um some pretty fast times. I think what three six so far has been the fastest for the rodeo. But um, with with going uh, with going forward, what do you guys think as far as the race? And I don't know where, where are you guys sitting right now as far as the you guys sitting fifth. I don't I don't really know. Yeah, uh, I haven't looked at it. I'm uh, kind of for where we're at and average and everything. We just need to press and do all we can do in each round. So I'm not. I ain't really paid attention to it much. Yeah, and that's probably the key to it. But. Uh, I mean, for you specifically, Paul, you're in there with quite, you know, quite a crop of healers, and I mean, you're up there with those guys as one of the best. But uh, it it's been tricky on the heel side. It seems like I don't know if it's, I'm not really sure what the what the thing is, but we've seen more issues on the heel side from guys than maybe the heading side. But uh, what do you think is the key to making sure that you hit that corner and 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 get two legs? Because I still remember an NFR with so many, you know one uh there most of the steers are you can kind of leave with them and just get a get to a good spot wherever you need to and then there's a handful that are either going left and and you're gonna have to be there you're gonna have to really ride and uh and then there's some that are kind of pulling right and it really has made it hard on the headers to, uh what it looks like they're throwing and separating steers are there's a lot more right so uh healing just almost like a jackpot or rope and where you're trying to kind of place the steer in the arena a little right. bit more right yeah and i mean you had you had said it colby but i mean the starts everything and and all the good runs we've seen including your guys is it, it was being you know right on the barrier with the steer and you know, we we've seen guys like dustin really chuck a lot of rope and then run out of arena which you wouldn't think would happen but with the setup for you guys i mean it seems like taking the extra swing having being tied on the head side is kind of the key to consistency and you know throwing half your rope with a long rope like dustin does it, it kind of bit him in the butt a couple times just running out of room i think i think he actually hit the fence a couple nights ago but uh yeah i mean what's been your opinion of that so far oh well, i think it all depends on the round you know and what kind of start you get and i mean like tonight the round was a little bit softer i got a good start and i took an extra one just because last night i I, I ran over myself just trying to make up for for lost time that of this week and on a couple of steers and then tonight I was just gonna stay down and turn the cow and let Paul do what he does. Yeah, I mean it's definitely gives a header some uh, 
some uh, relief when you know you get a guy like Paul back there because it very rarely does he not do his job. But uh, kind of jumping around, we got to watch the undercover cowboy thing, and you were in that. <laughs> how the heck did you? <laughs> how the heck did you handle that? I mean, I thought you were going to punch Trevor in the face. <laughs> I I was. Uh... I, yeah, it took me by surprise a lot. I when I when it was happening, I thought it, I thought it was Patrick, or I had a pretty good idea it might be, but I didn't have any idea with Trevor. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was they dang sure ganged up on me. That, that was that one was probably the funniest because they've been releasing them every day, but I don't think I've ever seen a guy as much of a deer in the headlights as you were <laughs> on that. Thing. I've had more texts and calls on that than yeah, <laughs> anything like congratulations I've ever on the NFR, but what was that like? Yeah. It's kind of fun to see stuff like that, though, because, I mean, our industry is, it doesn't do – usually it's pretty dry and straight lace, and to see those guys doing that, I mean, I don't know how Patrick crawled into those jeans, though. That was probably <laughs> the, the funniest part of the whole thing. I mean, he must have surpri- from his that wife That doesn't or surprise me that he was wearing them, though. <laughs> Didn't surprise you? Oh, he was pretty confident. Oh, uh, Patrick being Patrick. <laughs> Uh, well, guys, we'll uh, we'll let you enjoy your round win. Correct. Congratulations on getting one of those buckles. I mean, there's only a couple of those suckers left, so for you guys to grab them, it's pretty awesome. And you know, obviously, it's a different kind of rodeo and it's a different kind of NFR. But uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like everybody's really enjoying it. Granted, you can't do much after or really before, but uh, you just show up and rope. Yeah, it's yes, been sir. Good. So, well, congratulations, guys. We'll let you get on and, uh, and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Don't you ever let that beard go nowhere. <laughs> This has been The Gage, hosted by me, Chance Conrado, produced and edited by our guy Ty Yeager. Shout out to the executive producers, Dustin Pointer and Cody Denton. Marketing and content produced by Riley Chone. Our theme song is by Shay Ashire and the Night Howlers. Make sure to rate and review this podcast as well as follow The Gage on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to The Gauge wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys next time.